Bag technique is a tool making use of the public health bag through which the nurse during his or her visit in the community can work with ease, swiftness, saving time and effort in rendering effective nursing care. The purpose of bag technique is to minimize the spread of infection from an individual to families and ultimately to the community while rendering service to a family member or a client during home visit. Upon arriving at the client's home, we have to place our public health bag on a flat surface or a table with plastic lining. And we have to observe that the folded part should be the one that's touching the table. We also have to line it with our paper lining. And still the same way inside out. As we put our public health bag on the table, we have to tuck or put the strap underneath the bag. That way, we can work with ease and convenience. We are doing this in order to protect our bag from contamination. If faucet is not available in the community, then you should ask for a basin of water and a glass of water that is to be used for hand washing. Hand washing is very important to prevent the spread of infections. Having a table lined with plastic lining, paper lining, is very important in order to protect your bag from being contaminated and to protect the area from getting wet. Also, this facilitates the creation of a non-contaminated working field. The next thing that we have to do is to take out our apron, our hand towel, and our soap dish and put it on one side of our working area and that is to prepare for hand washing. The next thing we have to do is proper hand hygiene or hand washing. Hand washing is again very important to prevent the spread of microorganisms. After hand washing, we have to thoroughly dry our hands with our hand towel. You may want to leave the plastic wrapper of your soap dish inside the bag so later on you can put back your soap dish and prevent your bag from getting wet. Then we are going to move on to putting our apron with the right side out and with the wrong side crease touching the body and slipping the head into the neck and neatly tying the strap at the back. Wearing the apron is very important to protect the nurse's uniform from getting soiled. Keeping the crease creates an aesthetic appearance. The next step to follow is that we're going to put out the things that we are going to be needing for this specific case and put it at the corner of our working area. Next is to place our waste paper bag outside of our working area. It is necessary to do that to prevent the contamination of our clean area. Next is we have to close our bag to prevent from being contaminated and as well as the contents inside. We can now proceed to the specific nursing procedure that we are going to perform. In order to provide comfort and security, make sure that you're maintaining good personal hygiene and hasten recovery. Benedict's test is a test that is used to detect sugar in the urine, such as glucose and fructose. The first step is to put 5 ml of Benedict's solution inside a test tube.
The second step is to heat the Benedict solution on the test tube over the flame. We have to remember that when we are heating the solution over the flame, we have to put the mouth of the test tube facing away from us as we move back and forth the tube over the flame. Add three to five drops of urine into the test tube and boil it. Now that it has boiled, we have to leave the mixture to cool to room temperature. Now that the mixture has cooled to room temperature, we may now interpret the color and the result. In this case, the mixture remained blue, which means that the patient has a negative trace of sugar or glucose in his urine. After that, we can explain to the client the significance of the result and give some health teachings to our client. This is especially significant if the color of the mixture has changed to green, yellow, or brick red because that would suggest that the patient has a lot of glucose in the urine and it's time for a total lifestyle change, especially when it comes to what we eat, we have to eat healthy. In the community setting, urinalysis using acetic acid is a very helpful tool for nurses to have an idea about the albumin level of a patient in his urine. This is especially done for patients with history of hypertension. The first step is to fill the test tube with a 5 ml or 2 thirds of urine. Next is to heat the test tube with the urine over the flame without shaking it until boiling. Remember that when we are heating the test tube, the mouth of the test tube must face away from the examiner or the face of the client. The reason why we are heating the upper part of the test tube is to compare the result between the upper and the lower part. The bottom part would have a negative result. Now that the top part of the test tube has boiled, we may now add 5 drops of 10% acetic acid, one at a time, and then we are going to heat it again until it boils. The rationale for this is to rule out the presence of phosphates. The formation of white precipitates indicates positive albumin. The mixture shows no turbidity at all, which suggests that the urine has a negative presence of albumin. The next thing after that is to record the result of the test, explain the significance of the findings to our client, and give a health teaching, especially if there is cloudiness that appears or if there is a high turbidity, which requires a total lifestyle change, particularly when it comes to what we eat and our physical activity. After contemplating with a nursing treatment, clean all the things that you have right here with alcohol or wash them with water and soap. This is to protect the nurse or the health worker from contamination and also to prevent the spread of infection to others. Next is do hand washing again or hand hygiene. Do 
Assuming hand washing again is necessary for aseptic purposes and to prevent the spread of microorganisms. We're moving on to putting back all the things that we have used inside the bag and make sure that they're in the proper place. This is to prepare your bag and your materials for the next use for your next client. Then we have to remove our apron, put it inside the bag, and as we fold our apron, the dirty part should be folded inside and the clean side out. We have to fold our apron back again to be used for the next client. And finally, we may now fold our plastic lining, our paper lining, and place it inside our bag. For follow-up care, it is important that we make a post-visit conference on matters relevant to healthcare, taking anecdotal notes and preparatory to final reporting. And still for follow-up care, it is necessary that we make an appointment for the next visit. We have to ask the patient for the date and the time that he or she is most available. We also have to state the purpose for our client, why there is a need for follow-up, and as well as the setting, whether it's at home of our patient or at the clinic. Thank you.